almost Christmas. Can you believe it? It's going to be here before, before you know it. And you know, the Lord kindly sent us some snow to remind us that it's the season that we are in. And we have been on a journey talking about joy. Everybody say joy. Have you, have, you, have, you ever, have you ever found that when you, um, for me, when I begin to preach something and I begin to communicate something, I get challenged in that particular area? Anybody ever find that? If you're talking about joy, you're talking about peace, you're, you know, you're, you're talking about harmony, whatever it is that, that you might be trusting God for, then, then that word comes to test you, whether it's the enemy, whether it's circumstances, whether it's even the Lord saying, hey, let's make sure this fruit is really working in your life. And so, and so I had one of those weeks. I had one of those weeks where uh, everything was opposite to joy. Uh, there was every reason not to be joyful, but you know, I had to exercise the, the muscle of joy. Come on, somebody. And, and, and it's, not always, it's not always easy uh, to trust and allow the Lord to work that out uh, in our, our hearts. But here's the beauty of joy is that joy works no matter what circumstances are occurring in our lives. because that, See, that's the difference between happiness, which are based on circumstances, versus joy, which is a fruit of the Spirit. Now, before I get into the Word of God today, because I want to talk to you about the culture of heaven, I want to go uh, to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. And I want to speak to you about the culture of the kingdom. But before I do that, I want to remind us that we are in the season, as the angel said, that the angel said he brought good news that would produce great joy. Good news that would produce great joy. And it's, it is an amazing thing to me that as I look at our society in particular, you know, you could, you could even say all of North America, but it, when you look at the Western world that really has been built on the foundation of the gospel, the foundation of the truth of God. As a matter of fact, you know, when, when Columbus uh, sailed the seas, he actually came for religious freedom. This is what uh, the Constitution in Canada, America, are, are based on. These are historical facts. They've, they're based on the, the Word of God. They're based on people that had incredible faith in the God that you and I worship. And this is what the, the New Worlds were all about, that there would be a place to express uh, religious faith uh, freedom, particularly the freedom of the gospel. But in a short little while, how many have noticed the, the flip that has happened in our world? Anybody, anybody notice that it's no, longer, it's no longer Merry Christmas, it's Happy Holidays, and, 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 and more and more Christ is removed from this, I, you know, from, you know, I recognize he wasn't born necessarily, in, you know, December 25th, but, but this concept that now let's just remove him completely uh, because we want to move to this secular idea, the secular world, and, and, and we will create, we will create our own joy. Now, the world has a concept of joy, it's called pleasure. The world creates pleasure, it's usually based on the wrong things, and, and I would be lying to you if I said to you there weren't pleasures there, I'd, I'd be lying to you. Uh, the Bible even says about Moses that, that he chose to suffer rather than what? To enjoy the pleasures of, of Egypt and of Pharaoh for a season. Uh, same thing with Joseph. And so it's not that there aren't pleasures in the world, but, but what they produce are temporary. They're, they're fleeting. They're, they're just going. But here the angel comes and he says, I bring you good news that's going to create great joy. And isn't it amazing that human nature always wants to reject God? always says, no, 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 you know what, we can do it without you, we can figure it out, we can, we can create our own world, we can create our own system, we'll create our own righteousness, which we'll talk about in just a moment, but I, I wanted to show you a video, I wanted to show you a video that first appeared, my understanding, if, if we are correct in our research, uh, first appeared on a comic strip in the 1950s, and then a little video, it's about a minute and 40 seconds, I want you to watch this, then it was aired on television 
in the 70s, which, which back then was risque, but imagine this being played today for the first time. If, if they would even allow such a thing that you and I, for you and I, it's actually when you, when you watch it, you're going to say, well, what's the deal, Pastor? What's the big deal? But I want you to understand the world that we are living in, but really this is the meaning of Christmas. Can we play that? And some of you should recognize this clip. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. That's what Christmas is all about. <laughs> and what I, what I love about what I love about that clip is not only do they tell the story, but literally that is scripture. They are literally reading scripture. It was on national television. It was uh, you know very risque uh, in those days. And I thought to myself, wow, how far we have fallen in just fifty years. How far we have fallen, really, when you consider that a generation, a generation is considered to be 40 years. That means in one generation, we have lost so much ground from the truth of what heaven is trying to uh, communicate that even as Pastor Moses uh, said to us earlier, it's not, it's not that God wants to be bad to us. God is actually good to us. God, God is concerned about the, the, the state of our soul, and that's why he sent his son not to punish us, not to destroy us, but literally to save us. And so I want you to turn in your Bibles. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, when, when you have an opportunity, I want you to read the entire chapter. But let me give you a background because we're going to just read a, a couple of verses out of it. 
that deal with the kingdom of God. But let me give you the, the background of, of the chapter. It's, it's really about eating and drinking and, and dietary laws. And, you know, should we have, should we have meat? Should we not have meat? Should we, you know, eat things like pork or not eat things like pork? And, and, and so, you know, I want you to notice that almost in every religion, there is always this debate that somehow we are acceptable to God because of what we what we consume, what we eat, what we should eat, what we, we shouldn't eat. And we know that that even in the Old Testament, there are a lot of dietary laws that, by the way, came from God uh, to the Jewish people that distinguished them uh, regarding you know, dietary laws from the people around them. Now, here's what I believe with all my heart, that the dietary laws that God gave, he didn't so much give them for religious purposes as much as he gave them for medical purposes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you actually study the, the dietary laws that God gave to to the Jewish people, for example, when he said, don't eat shellfish. Shellfish, not selfish, but shell fish, um, are actually very high in cholesterol. And so they're not, they're not good for you. And so, and so all, through the, all through the ages, even to this day, some, you know, I come from a, I come from a, a, a Catholic background, you know, Fish Friday, right? On, if you were a holy person, if you were a holy person, you had fish on Friday or on the eves, like Christmas Eve and uh, Good, Friday, Good Friday in particular. And listen, listen, if you eat meat on Good Friday, you go directly to hell. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and these are the things that people follow, you know? No, it's like listen. You can you can swear, you can steal, you can cheat, you can be a devil, but make sure when it's dinner time you have fish, and then you're okay. And, and, and people follow this. This is the stupidity of of religion. People follow it blindly. People are people are just following concepts and ideas and books and and even people that we've had here in our church that recently got saved and said, you know, I, I searched everything, but here's what I love: what they say, nothing made sense to me. Nothing made sense to me until I, I read the word of God. And so, so that's the background. That's the background. Now, why is it important? Because when people believe something so strongly, particularly about God, how many know that it causes fights? Huh? Like if I believe I, I shouldn't eat this and you believe that you should, all of a sudden it, become, it becomes a, a major issue. It becomes a discord. This is why I, and I experience this again. My friends, listen, please keep praying for me. I'm still writing the book. I, I was so encouraged when Pastor Rick said it took him eight years to write his first book. I'm like, praise Jesus. I, I don't want to be eight years, but it, it's taking me longer than I thought. But here again this week, church, I experienced this concept of people that believe they are highly spiritual and they have no emotional intelligence and they just cause wars. They just cause fights. As a matter of fact, they come out of prayer rooms just ready to fight. And I, I've said to you before, I'm like, go back in there and, and make sure God was in there with you because I think the wrong spirit was with you. Come on. And so I want you to look. I want you to look here in the Bible. Can, can we just stand? I want us to read. I want us to read. People are, I'm getting text messages from the congregation about, about the message and I, uh, I, I should have probably put it on. Uh, it's all right. It's all good. I'm focused. All right. So, so in the midst of this, here's what Paul says to the church that was in Rome. He says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Here's what he's saying. It's not what you're consuming. He says, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Remember, remember Peter struggled with this very same thing when the sheet came down and, and he said, no, 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 Lord, the, these, things are, these things are unclean. And watch this, watch this church. Jesus redefined what is clean and unclean before God. He redefined it. And this is why he's such a problem to people because people would rather rather live unrighteously and follow a religious system rather than say that my righteousness has come from God. He says, for he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify one another. In other words, Paul's saying you're focused on the wrong things. 
You're focused on wars and fights that God isn't even concerned about. Whether, whether you eat pork or don't eat pork or beef or don't eat beef and now you know that, you know, Pastor Moses, you're going to save the planet because you don't have steak. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Pretty soon they're going to turn you back to eating dirt and insects and tell you that, that it's good for you because of this nonsense, this woke culture that is going on. But today I want you to understand that the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for enlightenment. We, we thank you that we have been brought into the truth. We are people of the truth. We've been liberated today, Lord. Liberated to serve you. Liberated to live life. Live, liberated to enjoy. To enjoy the things that you've granted unto us. For every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And we bless you today. In the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, turn to some people say, Great joy. Come on, turn around. Say, Great joy. Great joy. Great joy. Hallelujah. Say, Great joy. Hallelujah. I have a little bit of a, I have a little bit of a PowerPoint for you, but I actually want to start, uh, whoever's on AV, I'm calling an audible here. I actually want to start on, on, my, on my last slide, on my last point, because my last point is this, that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, but notice what Paul says in the Holy Ghost. It, it, it is in the person of the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. You know that I almost got arrested. I almost got arrested in, uh, in Jerusalem there. Uh, I want to say because of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit would say, you got arrested because of you, bro. And so let, 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 let's not blame the Holy Spirit because I've been rebuked on that before where, where you know, every time the service went long or, or there was something, I would just go, oh, you know, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, stop blaming me and start blaming yourself, you know, because the subject, the, the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. In other words, listen, just, just because I move, don't blame me, blame yourself. And so here's what, here's what Paul is saying, that this righteousness, this this peace, this joy, this, this culture of life, this way of life, this philosophy that we, are, that we are talking about is actually in the person of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, it says that if we live by the Spirit, if we, if we walk by the Spirit, if, if we conduct our lives by the Spirit of God, in that chapter he says there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation to the people of God because the Bible says that God is even greater than your sin, that when you fail, that, that when when you mess up, when you want to give up, the Bible says, no, 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 God is even greater than, than your greatest mess up. Than your, whatever it is that you created, whatever it is that you're being condemned with today, even if our hearts condemn us, the Bible says that God is greater. So, so first and foremost, I want you to understand, you're on the wrong slide, bro. You need to go to slide number, the last, very last slide. We're in the person of the Holy Spirit. We're in the, por, in the person of the Holy Spirit, where, where we have this fullness, where we have this expression of joy because my friends we are people of the spirit and, and in the day that we are the day that we are living in we must return we must return to being led by the spirit of God to being directed by the spirit of God to being people of Holy Spirit not 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 just in in, in just words but literally to be filled again with power to to be filled again with his anointing to be filled again with come on give God praise somebody. I love programs. I, I love all the things that we do. I, I, I don't despise any of this thing at all. But what I, what I am going to say is we cannot replace the power, the presence, and the person. Because he's not a dove and he's not a thing. He is the person, the third person of the Trinity, who, by the way, the Father and the Son have incredible respect for Holy Spirit. And they say that if you sin against the Father and the Son, you'll be forgiven. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, it is actually a sin that doesn't even come under the, the blood covenant of Jesus. That's the Bible. The Spirit of God is the first person that is mentioned in the book of Genesis, in the entire, in the entire Bible. And so let's understand, my friends, that there are a lot of spirits that are uh, speaking. There are a lot of spirits that are demonstrating things. There, there are a lot of spirits that are actually coming across like the Spirit of God, but in reality, they are not the Spirit of God. We are seeing a lot of counterfeit. You will see more counterfeit as the days 
days go on. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that unless the days of persecution had been shortened, even the very elect hmm, would be deceived. Now, here's a great question for you. Here's a great question for you. Uh, and I, you know, I don't want to drop a grenade in the sermon here, but if, uh, if you're not here because you already got on the rapture bus, then who's left to be deceived? How is it possible? Unless the days were shortened, see how quiet the church got? Unless the days were shortened, the very elect, the very elect would be deceived, which would suggest to me that the elect are here during the days of, of great deception. And, and so anyway, that's, that's just a little bonus I give you to, to take home and you can chew on that bone if, it, if you want to. But, but really the reality of what I, what I want to share with you here, even as it says in Psalm 46.4, turn to somebody and say, it's okay, just, it's okay, you're, you're, you're going to be okay, you're going to be okay, praise the Lord. Uh, when, when it starts, when it starts, come see me and I'm going to pray for you in my office. All right, Psalm 46. 6, 4, the Bible says there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Now watch this. He's not a river, but the river that he is talking about here, the psalmist is saying, I see a river that comes from the throne of God. It makes the city of God glad and it begins to flow from the throne of God all the way to the earth. We know about this on Pentecost Sunday, and then, or on Pentecost I should say, and then Jesus Jesus said this, from out of you shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Do you know why? Because that same spirit is in you. This is important. You got to catch this before we move on. The spirit of God, that, that very river of God, that refreshing river of God that literally comes from the throne of God is in you, is in you. And it flows out of you. And this is why we are joyful people. This is, this is why we rejoice. I, I was sharing with Candace, you know, and I had to do something this week, and, and, and you know, and, and I had a week. Honestly, church, I had a week. I just, I just want to leave it right there. I had a week. It wasn't even Pastor Moses' fault because he wasn't even here most of the week, and, and so I was like, I can't even blame him, and so, uh, so anyway, I, I had to go do some things. I'm like, okay, you know what? Uh, right after work, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down to Yorkdale, and, and I had to do some things and purchase some things, and, and so I get there. I find the right spot. I thought, okay, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a coffee. I've got it all laid out. I'm gonna pick up some dinner because I was really hungry. How many people get hangry? Anybody get hangry? You know, your whole personality. You know, it, it's almost like it doesn't matter how spiritual you are. When, when, when you know, like, like, oh Jesus, I love you, but mm, I'm hangry. You know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Come on. I know you're all saints in the room. All right, so. Uh, so I get there and, and uh, you know, I park underground because I was just talking about this new parking. And I'm, I'm like, praise you. Here we go. You know, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden I go like, I start and I'm like, oh, no, I forgot my wallet. I forgot my wallet. I forgot my wallet in church. Now I'm at Yorkdale. Forgot my wallet. And um, so now I can't buy the gifts. I can't buy any kind of dinner. Now I'm getting hangrier. <laughs> All right, now I'm, now I'm frustrated. And then I'm like, can I even buy a coffee? And thank God, I'm not even good at these things, but thank God, Emily had, had put one of the, uh, you know, the Starbucks cards on my phone. So I had my, my, my phone. I know some of you are there, like, what about, what about Apple Play? And what about, I, I get it, I, I get that, all right? You don't condemn me. I, I, don't, have, I don't have it on my phone. And, but, I, but I did have the card, so I was able to get a, I was able to get a coffee because I, I think Holy Spirit thought, you need something because you're, you're, not, you're not doing well. And so I thought, what do I do? Do I leave? Do I just, you know, and I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not going to leave. I, 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 obviously, I can't accomplish what I need to accomplish here, but I was able to get a coffee at least, and I just walked around the mall. I walked around the mall. I cleared my head, but I, I made a decision that, that I would allow that river to flow in me, that, that, that rather than allow the enemy to frustrate me even more and upset me even more, and, and you don't have time for this, and how could you be so ridiculous, and how could you forget that, and I know people that do that, and I don't want want to mention people's names but but I thought how could I how could I do that 
Mm -hmm. But I, I'm noticing something as you get older. Some interesting things happen, right? And, and uh, even yesterday, I just hurt, I hurt my hand just, you know. Was, oh, anybody, if you're getting older, you know what I'm talking about, right? I, I was sharing with Sean right here. I, I said, oh, you know, I hurt my hand. I can't close my hand. And over nothing. Just re You know what's ridiculous about getting older? So I, I go to the gym. I'm pumping all this. I'm pumping all this weight. You know, yesterday I, I come home. I'm feeling good. Then I, then I literally go to pick up a, a, a case of, of pop. And all of a sudden this muscle just. Re Anybody know what I'm talking about? Everybody say joy. Everybody say the river. So, so watch this. Number one, he says, it's in the person of the Holy Spirit. The church, it's in the person of the Holy Spirit. We, we need to become people of the Spirit. But then he says this. He says the kingdom. He says the, the very kingdom. What, what's, what's the kingdom, church? The kingdom is the rule and the reign of God. It's the rule and the reign. Now, here's why I want you to know that it's in the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Paul says. What Paul is really saying is God is greater than his kingdom. God is greater than his kingdom. There's nothing that can hold God. As far as, you know, we talk about heaven. How many understand that heaven is in God, God's not in heaven? You, 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 gotta, you gotta have to understand this about God. Heaven can't contain God. The, the thro like, like, like when you think about, you know, King Arthur. King Arthur built this amazing empire called Camelot. And so, you know, Camelot was supposed to be greater than King Arthur. King Arthur rules from Camelot. In other words, King Arthur is contained by Camelot. But my friends, listen, the kingdom does not contain God. God contains the kingdom. God contains heaven. That's why we're, wherever God is, wherever God is, that's heaven, right? <laughs> that's why I'm going to throw another one at you. Some of you that, some of you that are on, I don't know why I'm talking about this today. Some of you that are on the rapture bus, you're going to pass Jesus on the way down. I'm telling you, you want to go up? Jesus said, I'm coming down to rule and reign on the earth. That's what he, that, read your Bible. He says, I'm coming down. Some of you are saying, I'm going up by Jesus. I'm like, no, no, I want to be where Jesus is. I, I, want to, I want to rule and reign where he is. And the Bible says he's going to reign on the earth. Mm, that's why I, these little climate change people just make me laugh because I'm like, you didn't read the book because he said he's going to burn the, the earth with fire and he's going to have a new world. He's going to have a new earth according to his glory. And so, and so my friends, I want you to understand that the kingdom is the rule. It's the, it's the reign of Christ. It's the, it's the culture uh, of, of the Lord. Can I say it this way? It's the authority of God that is in your life because the Bible says the kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in you already. Now, do we see the fullness of it? We do not. But is the kingdom of God here? It is. Because John the Baptist began to preach about the kingdom of God coming. This is why he said, repent and, and get ready and make straight the way of the Lord. Because the kingdom, the, the authority, the rule of God is coming on the earth. And my friends, I want you to notice that human nature always resists the kingdom. Them. It always resists his authority. It always resists his ways. We don't, we don't want to be like you. We don't, we don't want to do things your way. We don't want you to constrain us. We, we will create our own systems. We will create our own ways. We, we don't want to be ruled by you. That's really human nature. This is why when we give our lives to Christ, it is submission. We are, we are submitting our lives to the authority of the kingdom of God. And so Paul says to us, here's what it's like. It's righteousness. It's, it's peace. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, here's what the Bible says. Here's what Jesus said. He said, this gospel shall be preached in all the world, and then the end will come. The end will not come before the gospel is preached. I don't care who writes what book, what blog. I don't care who says what about what. The end will not come until the gospel is preached in all the earth. So I began to do some research. I don't know if you know this, but they estimate that 40% of the world, or approximately 3.2 billion people, are still considered unreached. 40%. So those of you that are want to take, I don't know why I'm saying these things. Those of you that want to take off at any minute, you ain't going anywhere. 
because 40% of the world is unreached, which means you and I have some work to do. And, and by the way, by the way, church, listen, you know, we always have this idea that all, you know, the unreached are in some kind of like, you know, backwoods, back jungle, you know, they've, they've never seen or heard of civilization. My friends, there are people right in your neighborhood. You have people right beside you that are unreached. Children that in Canada don't even know who Jesus is. That there is a savior, that, that there is salvation. I, I know people from other religions that they celebrate Christmas because of the gifts and the lights and they, they love all those aspects of it, but they don't necessarily tell their children, here's what Christmas is all about. See, see that's the great deception that you can have Christmas and not have Christ and, and people can still feel part of what's going on, but in reality, the, the truth is missed. That's, that to me is demonic. To give people a, a sense of, hey, you belong and you're part of this thing, but in reality, you're, you're still on the outside looking in wondering what is this all about let me let me read this quote to you the subjects that's you the subjects of the kingdom are not intended to be fattest gourmets or wine connoisseurs they should be characterized by lives of practical righteousness by dispositions of peace and harmony and by mindsets of joy in the holy spirit that's from the believers bible's commentary Think about the festivities of the year. Think about the food, if you will, particularly the, the sugars. I, I put something, uh, my last class there on Thursday, you know, I put something on Facebook where beautiful people, you know, they brought me in this, there's a, a specialty uh, cake and, and, and I guess uh, what, what, donut place, bakery that they make these, I'm telling you, they make, anybody saw that picture on, on my Facebook page? I mean, you eat that thing, Susan, go right to the hospital because you're going to have a heart attack. You know what I mean? It, but, but, but how many know that food talks to you? Hey, food talk, I've told you this before, food talks to you. And, and so I'm like, I don't care what you say, and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and we're not, I, you know, and I didn't even, by the way, I, I, and I'm, I'm online now because we're going to put this online, but I didn't even taste it. You know why? Because you taste that thing? Or is, is that only me? Is that only me? Huh? Is that only me? Like, like, I can look at it, not have it, no problem. If I taste it, mm -hmm. oh, oh, church, could sin be a little bit like that? See, if, if you don't partake, you're like, uh, you know, uh, then I don't know what it is. But all of a sudden, you partake a little bit, you partake a little bit. Before you know it, you have the whole bag, right? It's like those Krispy Kreme donuts. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, oh, I'll just have one. Six later. <laughs> You're in, that, you're in that coma. You know what I'm talking You're like, oh, why? Why did, I, why did I have that? But that's the reality. So here's what he says. He says it's righteousness. It is joy. We're going to go back, Luigi, to the very first slide. I know I'm driving you crazy, but we're going back to the first slide. So everybody, we know what the kingdom of God is. And by the way, the Bible says that all the nations of the earth will become and submit to the kingdom of God. So number one, it is righteousness. It is righteousness in the Holy Ghost, which, which righteousness really means doing the right thing. It, it is the idea of standards and morality. Now, watch this now. Watch this. It is the morality that is based upon the kingdom of God. It is the morality that is based upon this book. Not your own morality. Not, not what the world creates. This whole idea of wokeness and, and all this uh, political correctness that really is a counterfeit to God's righteousness. And so they say, well, you know what? We have a moral standard. Here's our moral standard. And, and they begin to aggressively promote it. But in reality, have you noticed that the majority of their moral standards all go against God's word? They all go against God's word. They, they rewrite. Oh, God says this, we're going to rewrite this because, because they, they turn God into an individual that is not inclusive, but he is exclusive. How many know that God is exclusive? How many know that everybody doesn't get in? How many know that there are gates that surround heaven that, that even if you want to arrive, you can't get in? It's not to keep the people in, it must be to keep something out. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? But well, see, we have this concept, every road, every, every road leads to heaven. Well, every road might lead to heaven, but you're, gonna, you're not getting in unless your name is in that book, the, the book of the Lamb. So if you don't know the Lamb and your name's not in that book, you're not getting in. I don't care what you think you've done on the earth and who you helped and what your wokeness was and all the rest of it. But, but watch, watch what's going on in our world, church. Well, I, heard of, I don't know if you heard of this story. In Virginia, Pastor Moses, a, speaking of food, a, a restaurant, uh, one of the, the chef is quite famous, she has a, she's been on uh, the Food Network, she's been on CHOP, and, and she'll, she's well known, and so a Christian organization hired her, hired her catering company, hired her restaurant, and you know, they thought, okay, you know, we've hired you, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna pay you, we're gonna have this event, and literally, literally, in the last hour, they canceled the event, on these Christians. Anybody know? Have you heard the story? They, they canceled the event because they said, we feel unsafe with you coming and us serving you and, and we, you know, we cater in this event. And so we are canceling your event because really uh, you're unsafe people, you're bigots, you're racists and all the rest of it, you're homophobic because the reality was that there was a lot of gay people that worked for this restaurant owner and, and caterer. So the very last minute they said, you know, we're not serving you, we're not doing this. Now, I want you to, I want you to understand if, the, if that had happened in reverse. Hmm? I mean, we, we, we've had Christians end up in court because they refused to bake a cake. Here you have a contractual agreement that at the very last minute, but you see, did you hear about it in the news? No. Did any politicians stand up and, and decry this and call racism and whatever? No. Because the reality is this. Let me tell you the truth. Our society is very racist. Our society is very discriminating. It's just who you pick and choose to discriminate against that allows you to get away with stuff. Uh, that's political correctness. That is wokeness at, at, at its absolute optimum. That, that, that is what it's all about right there. And for you and I that are, watch this, here's, you have to understand how persecution starts. See, persecution doesn't just start. What happens is first you marginalize a group of people. And then when they are marginalized, then, then when other people go, yeah, yeah, you know what? Good for you for canceling on them. That, that was the right thing to do. And they, they begin to see that, oh, this, has, this is picking up momentum. Then it's easier to persecute the people. See, this is what Nero did. Nero began to marginalize the Christians. And then the madman who set fire to the cities and the streets of Rome, instead of taking the blame, you know what he said? It's the, it's the Christians. And so then the Christians began to be persecuted and, and their, their property taken and they wound up in the, you know, they wound up in the, uh, in, in the Colosseum and what have you. Why? Because it was easy to blame them and the people had an appetite to blame a certain group of people. So he says, he says it's about righteousness. It's about, it's about standards. And, and, and I love this one quote that, that it says here. Uh, it says here, the true religion or, or the faith of the Bible is God's image stamped on the heart. You know that you have an image of God that is stamped on your heart. It's the kingdom of God. It's righteousness. It's, it's you're different. Not, not that we're better than anybody else. No. The only thing that differentiates us from anybody else is that Christ has saved us. And that we're washed in the blood. And we ought not to be proud of that in the sense of we're so proud it actually should humble us to say we, we needed God and we've accepted him. And, and so here's what he says in, in 2 Corinthians 5 20 and 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now here's what I want you to understand. In Christ, you're made righteous. You are righteous. If you are in Christ, God says, I look at you as righteous. That's your standing. You're, nobody can change that. No, God, that's God saying that. Now watch this. To live righteously is a whole different thing. <laughs> right? See, I, I may be in, in, in standing in God's eyes as righteous, but not live righteously. And this is the challenge in the body of Christ. This is the challenge that people are, are watching with believers and they're saying, well, this is what they say, but this is how they behave. So if I say something, but I behave another way, then that's what we call hypocrisy. 
Now here's what I want you to understand, though. If you are righteous and you're living righteously automatically, I'm telling you, church, listen, automatically you're going to have peace. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In other words, here's what Paul's really saying. The kingdom of God is not what goes into you, but it's actually what's being produced in you. Hmm? So this idea of I have pious moments and pious days and I, you know, and I even, even by the way, fasting that is done with the wrong motivation is actually not acceptable to God. And, and this is why the religious people struggled with Jesus all the time. And, and even when you read about things like the washing, please understand Jesus wasn't talking about washing your hands with soap and water. It was a, it was a religious system uh, which, which the Pharisees had created to, num to quote unquote, you know, be righteous or be clean before God. And, and they said, hey, how come your disciples don't wash their hands? It's not that the disciples were dirty. What they were saying is you're not following Jewish ceremonial law, which, by the way, they created. They said, here's how we're going to be accepted. And so Jesus, who's more concerned about the issues of the heart, and he cuts through all this, all, all this religious bureaucracy to say, here's what God is really after. That's why Jesus said, you're like whitewashed graves. You're all, you look good on the outside, but on the inside, he says, you're full of dead men bones. He said, let's get down to what really matters. Let's, let's forget about all this outward appearance and, and let's get to the matter of the heart because my friends, listen, when, when we have righteousness, ultimately you're going to have peace. Now, I want you to understand this word peace here. This word peace is not about salvation. It's not about having peace with God. It's actually about having peace with one another. There was... There was fights and arguments about food and how to be acceptable to God. And so this word is literally about unity, Pastor Moses. It's about harmony. It's what he's saying is if, if you follow God's righteousness, you're actually going to have peace with one another. Because believers, listen, whether you like people or not, believers ought to have peace with one another. Harmony and unity. In, in relationships and, and so church listen when, when there is no unity and when, when there is conflict and when there is you know a lack of can I say it this way a lack of peace that means that something righteous is not happening somewhere something's off something's off somebody's off and therefore the peace which should automatically be produced because we are behaving righteously is lost that's what he's talking about. Be at peace. Be at peace with one another. Be, be at harmony with one another. Can I say it this way, church? Even when you don't agree. Even when you don't agree, Ranjeev. You know, we, we live in a world. Listen, we live in a world now that, that no longer can you express your opinion without somebody attacking you. Huh? We, we don't know how to have crucial conversations. We don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to, you know, respectfully disagree. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with your thoughts. I don't agree with your philosophies. I don't agree with your opinions. And maybe you don't even agree with mine and that's okay. But, but don't, you don't have to attack me over that. You have to belittle me and, and crush me and destroy me and all the rest of it. But, but this, is that, this is that woke culture that we're living in. But my friends, watch this. Sometimes it's even amongst the believers. Hmm? Like, you know, I've been talking a lot about eschatology. What's eschatology? What's going to happen at, you know, at the end of time? How many people have left relationships, left churches because, well, I don't agree, you know, I don't agree when, you know, I'm taking off before the rapture, some are mid, some are at the end. The, the reality is nobody knows the truth. Be ready. Be ready. So it's not something to divide. It's not, it's not something that, and I'm telling you, there, there have been, over the days, fierce arguments. People attack. People, you know, they go, oh, you're, you're not even the people of God. You don't, you're not even saved. You don't even know Jesus. You know, and they, they go on to these extremes. Peace. Everybody say peace. peace. I want you to see another concept. I want you to hear this. Because many people misunderstand peace for relief. I've had conversations with people that have given their lives to unrighteous things. 
and have said to me, Pastor, for the very first time, I am experiencing peace. I had one young lady, family that used to go here years ago, and um, she decided she was a lesbian. Fought it, fought it, prayed, fought it, fought it. But you know, at one point, she, she gave her life into that, into that lifestyle. She's actually married a woman. She's married to a woman today. But I remember what she said to me. She said, Pastor, you know, basically, don't, don't tell me about the Bible. Don't tell me about the Word of God. Because for the first time in my life, I have peace. And, and uh, I thought about that. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what, what, how could she have peace? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, she doesn't have peace. She has relief. See, when, when you give in, how many have found that when you're battling something, you're, you're in a fight, you're in a struggle? It's not peaceful. When, when you're at war, when you are wrestling demonic things, when, can I say it this way? When you're wrestling with yourself, anybody know what I'm talking about? It, it's not a peaceful time. It's, it's, it's tumultuous, it's strenuous, it's, oh, I gotta fight this thing again, I gotta resist this thing again, and, 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 and it's a battle. But you see, when you give in, it appears like it's peace, but really it's relief. The fight's over. But what you don't understand is now you're imprisoned. Now you're imprisoned. Do you know, do you know how many prisoners actually don't want to be released from prison? Because then I have to make decisions and I have to work and I have to live my life in a certain way and, and now I have to make decisions on what to wear and what I'm going to eat and all these things that are all made for you that the church, listen to me, many people would rather have relief than peace. See, true peace comes from living righteously. And so if I have righteousness, I'm going to have peace. And then if, if I'm going to have peace, then not only am I going to experience joy, I'm going to experience the fullness of joy. Hmm? And, and I said it to you earlier, and I want to say it to you again, that there is a difference between peace and relief. But watch this. There is a difference between the world's pleasure and the Lord's joy. Hmm? The devil's not stupid. You, you, you think that fruit, I know that if we go back to the garden, I know you've always seen it as an apple. The, the, the Bible, the Bible does not say it was an apple. Huh? Church, can, let me tell you about this religious spirit. Delroy, I had a man, I had a man I, a few years ago come down the aisle with a thick Bible. When they come to you with a thick Bible, it's over. You know, it's over. And listen, anything thicker than this and, and, and you're in big trouble. So he, he comes down the aisle and he's just angry. He's angry. He's berating me. He's just, because we had, we had shown a video. We had shown a video of, of uh, and it wasn't even me that showed the video. It was our worship pastor at the time and he was irate at me that Pastor, you know, you have a doctrine. You ought to know better. You know that there were three wise men. <laughs> this is not even a joke, Reggie. I'm telling you. I'm like, what are you talking about? So he goes, he goes, you, you know, you and your doctrine. He goes, you know, I've studied the Bible too. And that's when, you know, and I, so I said to him, well, sir, open it for me. And show me where it says there were three. He slammed that Bible. I haven't seen him to this day. Left the church. Angry, hostile. He's probably still looking for the three. You know, but... <laughs> Can I ask you the question? Let me go back to the garden. What did Satan show Eve that was so enticing? What, what was it about that fruit that no other fruit in the garden could compare. The Lord said, you have the whole garden, just don't eat from this tree. You see, the devil made that thing look like there was nothing else in the garden like it. 
And this is where Pastor Moses, he says, you see, there's nothing in the garden like this fruit. That's why God doesn't want you to have it. Because God wants to deprive you. And God doesn't want you to have pleasure and God doesn't want you to enjoy things because he's stingy and, and who, who would create a perfect environment and put a tree here and say to you, you can't have it. But church, you know what the reality is? Here's the reality. There, there are things in God that you simply cannot have. Period. And, and watch this. See, some of the things none of us can have. But some of the things some people can have, but you can't have. See, 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 Delroy, religion says nobody can have it. But in relationship, sometimes I can have things that you can't have. And you can have things that I can't have. I, I remember, and I'm closing, I remember... When, when Apostle Ted Yuke was here, you know, he was doing a lot of work in Ukraine, a lot of work in Europe, and, you know, it's the culture there that, you know, remember he told this story, the culture there that they just drink wine, and, you know, I come from a culture that drinks wine, and, and so, you know, he just kind of, and I'm talking in the church, part of the culture, and he's on a plane, and the Lord speaks to him and says, Ted, he says, I, I want you not to drink wine for the sake of your anointing. He said, you're not going to go to hell. He goes, you're not going to go to hell if, if you drink it. He goes, but for you? But for you? I don't want you to drink wine. Now, he didn't say that to all of Europe. He said it to that man on that plane. Now watch this. When, when he goes back, and all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, hey, you know, last time you had a glass of wine, have a... No, I can't. Well, well, why can't you? Well, the Lord doesn't want me to. Oh, you think you're better than the rest of us? You, you, you think you're holier than, than the rest of us? You, you think you're more righteous than the rest of us because, because we drink? And no, no, no. You know what I love? He says, it right, he says it right in this chapter. He says, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. So my friends, whether you drink wine or don't drink wine, whether, whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, here's, here's what the Bible is really saying. Here's what Paul is teaching. What is your conviction and what is your relationship in the Lord? Because that's what really matters. And then you don't have to go around judging everybody else and saying, you ought to do this and you ought to do that because I do this and the Lord showed me. Well, if the Lord showed you, then you do it. And then there won't be fights and there won't be contentions. And, and you know what? We're going to experience the fullness of joy and, and we won't get caught up. I could, I could talk about how we should pray for joy, obey for joy, how we get joy from appointing people to others, how we should expect rewards and that creates joys, how we should have joy in times of trouble. But, but my friends, listen, here's what God is really saying. I'm offering you joy. Put down the pleasures. They're fleeting. And a lot of those pleasures are going to get us into big trouble. I want you to stand with me, worship team. I know you're coming. We're going to sing a song, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, come on, rejoice in the snow. Rejoice in the sun. Huh? Rejoice in global warming. <laughs> rejoice in all of it because we serve a great and mighty God. Father, we bless you today. And we thank you that the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. We thank you for God's people, and we pray that your richest blessing will be upon them this day. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate your time. Will you please like and subscribe so that you will get notifications. And by the way, your comments and your feedback are very important to us. Even sermon series and messages that you would like to hear about, 
please let us know. Drop us a line. We would love to incorporate that into our teaching and our preaching. We appreciate you and thank you.